Okay, so <clears throat> I went and downloaded a new um, thing through Logitech that's supposed to help this camera. It's still going to let me zoom uh, automatically, but it wants to do its own autofocus thing. So um, we're only going to try. It's a whole new, kind of cool looking little setup over here. But anyway. That's all I'm here for. So I went ahead, uh, like I said last time, and the trunk has now been deleted. Uh, you can see there now. That's all filled in. The, the both sides have had the drip rail removed. I'll have to check that again with some primer. Um, door handles, the locks and the, the handle holes are gone. This side has that trim gone. On it, uh, so he's of course final saying you can see all the scratches and stuff, but it has the, the trim gone, and uh, then I still have this side here, and of course up here the little cow vent thing is gone, and uh, over here <coughs> we still have the trim on this side. And I was trying to figure out what I wanted to use to get rid of that trim, and I had bought some things that. Uh, I thought it would come in handy, and I never did really find a use for them until now. And that's these little sanders here. And I've had these for oh, probably a year, and just never could find a use for them until now. And I've tried them and tried them and tried them, and they just, I don't know, they just never really seemed to work for me until now. <clears throat> now I use this Rebel, which is really, really coarse, and uh, it would leave a nice sharp line right along the body, you know, if I push the sandpaper over the edge. And I was able to get in there and then sand right along that right along that line and remove this this panel, this trim out there. And then cleaned it up with um, one of my many little sticks that I wore out as I keep or in the end of these these sticks, I keep chopping the end off and chopping the end off and chopping it off till there's no end left. And uh, I use a rougher a rougher one. And uh, then I move down to I'll start back with three three twenty grit sandpaper and clean it up, and I'll move right back up through to probably eight hundred, about probably as far as I'll go, and get everything smooth and cleaned up, and get make sure everything's nice and round, and uh, so that's what, I'm, that's what I'm doing now. <clears throat> Say you drink a pop and of course that's making me choke. So um, let's go ahead. This thing doesn't have a timer on it, which kind of I don't like. It doesn't tell me how long I've been sitting here blabbing. It may have to set me a timer over here somewhere. And you can see this thing just me eats it right off of there. Can now. Uh, let's see if you're in here. I can. And there it goes. I'm zoom in. Get a little bit closer. Yeah, hopefully, still keep it. Still keep it in focus. Without moving the camera. Vibes of my dream. Thank you. 
Okay, so we've got the body line, the other body line off, and um, I've now went over um, everything with the 4,000, I went over with the 320, not, not 4,000, sorry, I went over with the 320 grit sandpaper, the 400 grit sandpaper, I used it with the wet grit, or wet, a little bucket here with some soapy water in it, but I just keep sitting on the workbench. And I uh, went over the whole thing with that. Uh, you see I knocked quite a bit of the scratches off. I glare now for some reason. I knocked quite a bit, knocked quite a few of the scratches off. And uh, I'm doing the hood at the same time. So now I'm ready to move up from the 400 to the 600. So I'm going to use it uh, wet. I'm just going to start with the, the hood now. And uh, that's why I like about this plexiglass, so I can just put it in the sand right, right here on the workbench and I don't worry about ruining anything. And just wipe it off and then I'm ready to go. And a little bit of water just keeps my paper from filling up. But when I'm doing some hard, hard cutting, I like to do it dry. That way I don't have to. This is my finish. My finish sanding. So I'm going to do it like this. And this one didn't have, didn't have any hard um, scratches or anything like that. So I'm just getting it back up to a nice smooth, nice smooth surface. So there is it for the. So we got. 400, 600. I just like to wipe it down, get all that sand and dust off. And you can see it's starting to look pretty, pretty good. We got a ghost line. I can see. I can still see a ghost line there, but it's got to be gone. Well, I'm seeing it because they're underneath the, under the hood. So that's why I'm seeing a ghost line. So let's move on to the 800. <clears throat> I'll just do that. I'm not putting a lot of pressure, I'm just putting light pressure here. Just trying to keep some some water on. I don't like staying over a sink doing this because it just absolutely tears my back up. And I just keep a bowl change every once in a while as a little get the like sandy residue and so I get it in the bottom of it. Just keeps it Nice and you stay comfortable and just take your time and push not waste some water around your sink. And it should be about here for the 800. There's no knock scratch off the one before. I said I was going to stop at 800, and I very well could. There's virtually no, uh, no scratches there. The primer we can cover. But just because I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm doing this anyway, I have a thousand right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and run over, run over this for a thousand.
here's the thousand. <clears throat> That's really, really good. Now, if this was in primer or in um, my clear coat, and I was cutting either one of those for, I was cutting a primer for um, a paint or a cut and clear coat for polishing, I would use the 3M uh, foam here. I just keep, I keep everything that I buy cut these little strips so it's just easier. I get this Walmart, it's the little 3M Sonoma section. And uh, I do the same thing with it, I wet that. And I'm not going to do everything with this, just, just the hood here. But, and I just go over it the same way. And uh, I rub this easily over the primer. Not aggressive because it, it doesn't look like it's cutting, but it really does. It really does cut. And uh, I have some of the 5000 Trizac as well. But uh, I find the 3000 works just fine. Um, no need to go to the 5000. But uh, you see some of the soap bubbles there coming off. But the 3000 really really all I use. I haven't used 5,000 in oh, maybe two years. So, and that's about all I would do right there with the, the um, 3,000. And if it, if for primer, if it was clear coat, I would definitely dry it off and look and see if I got rid of the um, orange peel. This primer, most of the time even my primer, I don't even have to do this with the primer. Let's say 99.9% .9 of the time I don't touch the primer. But I can see we're almost back to the way it was before I even start working on it. But um, I'll dry it off, look for, you know, make sure it was orange peel or anything, and then do that and be ready to go back for more clear or decal or a lot of times I'll do this step right here and then I can decal right over that and then go back and clear again over top of that. That makes it smooth enough for decals to stick for me anyway. So, okay, so I'll come back when uh, we've got some more show. Okay, everybody, so we're back with the 47 here and uh, we've got it all washed again. We've been sanding like a madman on this thing. Uh, you see we've got it all <clears throat> smoothed out and uh, about ready to go. Uh, yes, Chris, exactly. Um, so, we got uh, pretty much all sanded out. So I just put a bunch of junk on it. I thought these gloves were clean. And uh, so... I'm still putting the, the primer on like normal, but my primer is really, <clears throat> really a light colored primer, really, really a pale uh, gray. And I've been doing so much work to this, I really want to see if anything shows up. I'm going to go over first with a silver, and the only silver I have left now in my stash is this house color. It's like a fine Orion silver. It has metallic in it, which is not my choice as metallic, but it should show up any scratches or defects that I have left. And if there's anything there, then we will go ahead and sand those out. <coughs> and uh, get rid of those. And then we'll be able to go into primer test stage. And then the primer will cover up the, the silver. And then we'll be able to go into body color after that. So let's move over to the spray booth and we'll get some primer on this thing. Or some silver on this thing, I'm sorry. Okay, so we got our silver on. <clears throat> we got our light coat on here. And if I can get the light to stay off of it, you can see we have a little ghost line down the center of the hood. The silver showed up. Now, certain ways that does not show up if I keep the light off here. But in other ways it does. And I'm going to try and sand that. I'll sand across that hood. If that stays silver, then 
you know, it's on top. It's not, you know, because there is that line, if you remember, under the hood. This pipe ghosting through. So I don't know if I'll be able to get that out or not. Um, that's, that's a big if. If I'm not able to get that out, then I'm not sure what I'll do. I don't know if I'll take a piece of sprue and put that back on or what I'm going to do to get rid of that. Um, I guess I'll cross that, that bridge when it happens. Um, and then the trunk, I have went across this trunk so many times. We've got like four layers of the Tamiya putty on it already. And plus I went over a sprue goo a couple times. And I still have, you can see, uh, lots of, get the camera down here so the auto focus in, lots of pinholes. Oh, focus for me. They let me focus it. Lots of pinholes along this thing, pretty much all the way around. And you know, I got some scratches up in here, which a lot of this will cover with primer. The silver is just showing everything up, you know, there's scratches, scratches along here that you may or may not be able to see. Again, depending on the light. Get the light off of here. You may or may not be able to see those, those scratches. Anybody else see them? And that's just what the silver shows up for you. This enables you to find all that stuff you can't see with your, your naked eye. And then coming down, you can still see some, some pretty deep gouges right along here that you know, I thought were all gone along the window. So I have to get all that out. So I've still got you know, a fair bit more work to do to get this thing ready. Uh, I've already sanded it till I was about ashamed of myself sanding on this thing. But I guess there's still a lot more to do, and the the silver coat here should really help help that along. Uh, let me know when I have it out, and then we'll probably have to hit it with another another silver coat. But the silver is going very very light, so it's not really affecting anything. So, uh, and this here seemed to cover up pretty decent the hood vent. I think primer will just cover that right over there. I don't think you'll ever see that. This is kind of ghosting through the silver right now. So everything else looks pretty good. Just, most of my work was like from here back. So, well, from my cow vent back. So let's get started doing some more sanding. And uh, I'll be back when I have some of that done. Okay, so here we are again. Uh, we have the car wash dried ready for I'm going to just go ahead now and put primer on so we're going over again with the silver um we've got this thoroughly sanded uh, most all the silver is taken back off there's still a little bit left in areas but the primer will cover that you can see and uh, the car the body has of course the fireball so silver on it done no work there that's the area on the front scoop. There's been no work done there. But everything else has had the silver pretty well sanded off. Um, you can see where there's been work done where I've taken it off. Every place there's a little bit of red left. You can see that's where there was little pinholes. Um, so that's where I used red the red on just on the um, spot glazing putty. I had been using the Tamiya putty before. So I went ahead and used the Bondo this time. You can see all where all the red is now. There's all places that were missed before. So I think we have it now. And all the scratches should be gone. We took it all out with a higher grade paper. Um, all the places that had silver, so it should be gone. So we're going to put some primer on, see what it looks like. 
But I did want to show everybody uh, the Tamiya Putty. Um, I keep it in this one, and I've not done with this one. This, there's so much of this one that it really doesn't matter compared to this two. This is a lot more expensive than this stuff. So I've not done with this one. Don't know if the trick works on this. Don't really care. This stuff here, uh, you can see the lid never really fits back on. You know, it just kind of sets there. This stuff dries out so fast. But I just keep some in uh, in this little container and just keep it sitting around. And it hardens up on me. And that's still good putty. I still use this. And uh, all I do is just put a little bit of lacquer thinner in there. Just a small amount, and then I use one of these paint brushes I uh, had laying here. And I'll just get in there and start moving around this paintbrush, and it will just soften right back up. And it softens enough that I can apply it with the paintbrush and smooth on the areas that I want. And so just put a big blob on there and smear it around. And this will dry in just a matter of minutes to be sandable instead of waiting for you know a day or overnight for putty to dry. And then once this tube dries out, the putty inside is still good, even though it's dry. You can just scoop it out, put it in, you know, in here, put some lacquer thinner in with it, and just you know keep dabbing it with your paintbrush, and it will just soften right back up and become this paste. And you can still keep using that for you know long time ahead till you've used it all up. I just keep using this until it's all gone. Then I'll put more in and use that till it's all gone. And again, I've not done that with this. I don't know if this works to keep you using. I did put some of this out on a, on a uh, piece of tape here and then put some lacquer thinner in it to thin it out. And that's why I put it on the car with a paintbrush. And I hit it with a hairdryer and within, I don't know, half an hour maybe, I was sanding it on the car. So, you know, it did work that way, but I've not tried saving it. Because, again, there's so much of it that it didn't really matter. So, <clears throat> but that's how I do with this stuff. Just I learned that because the lid never fits and dries out. and I want to be able to apply it thinner than putting a big glob and trying to smear around with a toothpick and, you know, waiting two days for it to dry. So, but that's how I do my putty. So, now I'm going to move over and put some primer on this. And I will come right back as soon as we get the primer on. Okay, so now we have the parts uh, and primer, and they're probably still a little tacky. But I think this one's probably dry enough I can I can handle. We got both sides painted and primer. Get to zoom in here, and they look pretty good. And I don't believe it'll be any sanding necessary before I go to paint. It laid down pretty good. No no scratches, no nothing left now. Uh, the body, different story. Um, I do see a couple flakes right here I'll probably have to take out. But this trunk line is still just, <laughs> it's fighting me bad. Uh, still pinholes along here. Uh, a few pinholes down. But I think I'm to the point now where I can go in and... I'll have to sand this lightly, but I should be able once it dries. But I should be able to go in with the Tamiya surface primer and fill those holes, let this dry, and that should take care of it. Uh, but everything else looks really, really good. I don't see any scratches anywhere. I'll just run over this uh, real lightly with. Uh, and as soon as I'm doing this, I may do the hood. <clears throat> I'll just run over lightly, right, light, right, rightly, lightly with my 3,000 grit uh, paper here, and uh, you can see this cow man has gone. Uh, so I'll just run over lightly with that, and everything should be should be kosher. I'm just gonna get this trunk line to disappear, and that should make for a real nice. I'm not even in camera here. Sorry, people. This should make for a real nice smooth. Not a really nice smooth look.
by having a trunk there. And uh, power over this 3000 grit. And, uh, and when my paper gets like that, it's like scissors and just cut the end off and then I'll do a fresh end. And keep working down to my piece is too small to roll one too. And then throw it away. But, you know, I'll, I'll sand this and fill all these little holes. I'm just kind of repeating now because I wasn't sure what was on camera and what wasn't. But uh, everything else looks really good. I'll just run over it. Uh, you guess I'm almost afraid to touch it, but it seems to be dry. And uh, take that out. I hit this back here a little thicker. I put it on well, quite a bit thicker, so I'm not going to touch this. It still looks a little wet right in there. Uh, trying to trying to fill some of that with primer, which is probably not too smart, but um, it was worth a shot. I got a little bubble right there, a little my camera's like going to zoom in. Now you might be able to see a little, little bit of rundage right there. But uh, I'll sand that out, no big deal. But I just want to be sure to get this all covered up. And I may hit it with another coat of primer. I'll see. Once it's all, all done, and uh, see how this comes out. But that's where we're at. And uh, I may stop this video here. I'll see how long we have. And uh, pick up from the, another spot. I'll see. I'm not sure. But if this is the end, then I'll see it. New spot. If not, then I'll be back in a few seconds. So, bye-bye.